What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. On my way to jujitsu, we've got Mitch behind the camera, who lately I've been calling it Mitchithy. Name that show reference. Um, so today we are talking about really important habits for your health outside of exercise. Okay, now uh, I feel great. I got a great night of sleep last night. Headed to jujitsu right now. Once we're done with that, we're gonna get into the video. Let's get into it. What are we working on? We're working on from bottom position, basically just working on guard retention leading into a sweep. So the person on bottom doesn't want to be on bottom. So you wanna try and figure out a way to either submit them or so you can get on top. So we're gonna wait to try and get underneath, off balance him, and I can get on top and try passing his guard. I'll start by saying, I appreciate all of you being here. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. I could have the best workout program written. I could have the best meal plan written, but if you don't follow it, it means jack shit. Same exact thing with calories. If you've never counted calories, then do it for 30 days. Track your calories. You will cry when you see what a serving of peanut butter looks like. It sucks. It's been a crazy day, I did jujitsu, and then I did uh, like a whole Zoom meeting Q&A with a bunch of teachers, which was super fun. Now we are gonna go over 10 strategies to improve your health that are not exercise. Now, I think this is, maybe it's not the most important, but it's really fucking important, so I'm saving this one for last, and it's definitely a little bit unconventional, so I'm gonna save this one for last. Make sure you watch the whole way through. If you're new to the channel, first and foremost, like the video and subscribe if you don't already, but you'll notice a lot of blank spaces. This is my way of trying to make sure that you watch the whole video. I'm not gonna fill them in as the video goes on. I want you to watch each and every one. If you've seen my previous videos, sometimes I do get a little bit science-y and more in-depth. I don't think I'm gonna do that here. A lot of these are very self-explanatory, so I'm gonna fill in the blank for you, talk about it briefly, but maybe like, I'm gonna try and keep this between 30 to 90 seconds per point. And if I can do that, that'd be very fucking impressive. Mitch is nodding in the background like, yeah, that'd be impressive. By the way, if you don't follow Mitch, you can do that here. Mitch is my amazing videographer, absolutely incredible, and none of this would be possible without him. So getting into number one, remember these are, these are 10 ways to improve your health that don't include exercise. And I think when we're talking about health, most people think of either exercise, whether it's you know cardio or strength training or yoga, something like that, or nutrition. And we do have some nutrition, as you can see, like eat more of this, eat more of this, don't eat this, we'll cover those later on. But there are other aspects of health and wellness as well. And if you know, if you remember from middle school or high school, the wellness wheel, there are many more aspects to health than purely just physical, right? So the first one is remove blank from your life, remove negative people from your life. And I know this is self-explanatory, and I also know that it can be very, very difficult depending on who the person is and their relation to you and how long you've been connected with them. And also uh, the feelings of loyalty that I think are often put onto us, whether it's from other people or from our own head. <sighs> I am very much a strong believer in doing what is absolutely best for you because if you focus on doing what is best for you, then you can give your best to other people. If you are not doing what is best for you, you're gonna be drained. You're not gonna have as much empathy for other people, whether it's clients, whether it's your family, your friends, your colleagues. And I think one of the most important things you can do in your life is if someone is being negative, over and over and over again, if they're toxic, to use one of the trending words lately, if they're poisonous in your life, if they're a cancer in your life, remove them. And yes, definitely give them a fair chance. Let them know, be open and forthright with them and let them know what's going on and maybe why you might want to distance yourself. Give them the opportunity to change and to show you that they can change and, and be a positive, optimistic person in your life. But if someone is continually showing you who they are, and they are continually making your life worse, 
please do not feel obligated to keep that person in your life. Do not feel obligated to give them your time, your energy, your attention. I very much believe, and I have zero research to support this, but I very much believe that I think the people who live the longest and have the healthiest lives are people who are very good at distancing themselves from people who make their lives worse and more stressful and more anxious. Because there's no question about it, some of the longest living people in the world are some of the most calm, relaxed, peaceful people in the world. And if you've always got somebody in your life who's making it more stressed and more anxiety, it's like, it's gonna be very hard for you to live a healthy, happy life. So please, whatever you need to do, remove negative people from your life. If that is blocking someone on social media, block them. If it's unfollowing them, unfollow them. I mute people on social media all the fucking time. I think for Instagram, the mute button is one of the most genius buttons in all of social media. I don't have to unfollow them, I don't have to block them, but I don't have to see their content anymore, and that is a fucking godsend. In real life, if that sometimes in my real life, like I've told someone, hey, you're not good for me, and they just keep going, keep going, keep going, they don't change, and so I just stop responding. And I'm not bragging, I'm not saying that's the right way to handle it, but that's how I've handled it in the past, and it's part of it's one of the most important ways I keep a positive, optimistic mindset. So please, for the love of God, remove negative, toxic, cancerous, poisonous people from your life. Now, number two. This one is going to seem like exercise, and some might argue that it is, but it's actually, I, I don't count this as exercise. It's get at least 7,500 steps per day. Now, I have an entire video talking all about the 10,000 step rule and why it's important and how you can get more steps in your day. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'm gonna put the link to that in this in the description of this video so you can watch it. But please, at least 7,500 steps per day. If you look at the longest living populations in the world, you know it's, it's not the bodybuilders, it's not the crossfitters, it's not entrepreneurs. The longest living people in the world are the people who walk the most. And yes, there are other common denominators as well. But one of the most important, if not the most important, is in my opinion, walking at least 7,500 steps every day. If you can get to 10,000, great. I cover all of that in the video that I linked in the description if you want to go watch that. But 7,500 steps a day is one of the best things you can do for your overall health. Now, eat more fiber. Number three, eat more fiber for women. At least, at least, bare minimum 25 grams a day. Men, at least 35 grams per day. It is super important for your overall health. I, I can't even begin to tell you how much of an impact fiber has on your health and well-being, cancer prevention, and just overall living a healthy life. So please, most people are drastically under eating fiber and as a result of it having a lot of negative health outcomes. So if you haven't tracked your fiber, try tracking your fiber for one week and you'll probably be shocked at how little you're eating, but please, eat more fiber. Now, the other one is eat more protein. Now, I have to be very careful here because a lot of my audience is already very fitness focused and very strength focused. And in my opinion, a lot of the strength fo focused crowd overeats protein. They've been overdoing it for years and years and years, eating probably double the amount that they need to. Now, I think society as a whole is under eating protein, the vast majority of people, but the vast majority of people are unfortunately not following my YouTube channel. If you, so if you're new here, please like the video, subscribe if you don't already, but I would like to see you get at least 0.7 grams per pound of your current uh, goal weight. Okay, so not your current body weight, but your goal weight. And again, this is in pounds. So let's say your goal weight is 150 pounds. Multiply that by 0 0.7 and you get 105 grams. I didn't know that off the top of my head. I've just done that calculation many, many times. I'm really not good at math. But 0.7 times your goal weight is going to give you the minimum protein I would like you to have every day. A lot of people shoot for one gram per pound of their goal weight, which is totally fine as well. But I would say between 0.7 to one gram per pound pound of your current goal weight is a really, really good thing to shoot for. Now, if you are operating in kilograms or stones or whatever it is, just convert it to pounds and then do that. Um, now, protein, I'm not going to go into why it's so important and why you should be having more. I've discussed this ad nauseum in so many different videos, but I would say the two most important things outside of just calories are making sure you get your fiber in and making sure you hit your protein. If you're getting these two in, you are significantly more likely to live a healthier, happier, stronger life with a better body composition that's gonna help uh, promote more health over the long run. Now, don't eat. Okay, now this is, uh, 
This is actually, might be a little bit caught off guard on this because the name of my book, actually Mitch, could you pass me a copy of my book really quick? The name of my book, that was a perfect throw and a pretty slick catch. <laughs> Eat it, right? So what do, what do I mean don't eat? Well, you're gonna understand it because, actually if you haven't gotten my book yet, I'll put the link in the description if you wanna buy my book. Um, but don't eat foods that you don't like. Simple as that. I think a lot of people get really caught up in looking for the foods that they shouldn't eat, the foods that are inherently bad for them. Please, don't eat foods that are poisonous, like don't eat rat poison, because that's not a food, that's not edible, you shouldn't do that. But don't eat foods you don't like. If you don't like broccoli, cool, don't eat broccoli. I mean, you can have green beans, or you can have lentils, or you can have squash, or you can have whatever the fuck you want, but don't force feed yourself foods that make you sick or make you nauseous or you don't like them. By all means, search for ways and strategies and recipes to make very nutritious food, something that you do enjoy. That's, I think it's a really, really good idea. But don't feel like you need to eat raw broccoli or raw cauliflower just because it looks healthy or someone said that it's healthy. I think the best diet is one that you can sustain over the long term majorly because you enjoy it and, you can, and it also helps you achieve your goals. I think the best diet is one that you can sustain over the long term, that you actually enjoy, and also helps you achieve your goals. If you're eating food over and over and over again that you don't like, you're not gonna be able to achieve your goals because you can't sustain it over the long term. So stop eating foods you don't like. You don't have to do that anymore. Now, the next one. This has nothing to do with nutrition, definitely nothing to do with exercise. I want you to read. Now, I was just telling Mitch, it's been a long time since I've read a book cover to cover, actually just like holding a book. I do listen to a lot of audiobooks, which is super helpful for me because whether I'm driving or whether I'm on the elliptical or on the treadmill doing cardio on a walk outside, whatever it is, it's really nice for me to have audiobooks and I love audiobooks. It's a great way for me to read without needing to just sit down and stare at a book. But I think in terms of overall health and wellness, one of the best things you can do for yourself is read. And I'll say, I remember when I was really like getting, like growing in the fitness industry and I was just obsessed with fitness, all I would read were fitness books. And my mom would always be like, why don't you try reading something else? Try reading this. And I know it was coming from a really good place, but I was just obsessed with fitness stuff. So it's all I read. And I think that massively improved my life. Now I read a whole variety of different topics, whether it's history, World War II, whether it's science-based stuff, there's there, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, I read a whole bunch of different types of books and novels and histories and stories. But I think people would be much better off if they spent maybe a little bit less time on social media, a little bit less time, which is funny because you're watching this on social media, but a little bit less time on social media and a little bit more time just reading a book. You know, it's funny, and I know I said I was gonna do 30 to 90 seconds per clip, but I'm gonna interject this here right now. We talk about a, a lot about uh, attention spans and how attention spans have gone down and gone down and gone down. And there, I agree and I disagree for reasons far outside this, this one clip in this video, but one thing I've noticed is that with things like Instagram and TikTok and even YouTube Reels and things like that, where you just have new content every few seconds, new content, new content, new content, we have this dopamine spike. Every time you get a new piece of content, it's like boom, 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 boom. And I've noticed whether it's even watching a, a, a movie or a TV show or reading a book, it's like you feel like you need more dopamine. And so I think it's a really good practice to instead of just watching more content on loop over and over and over again, these quick in your face style of content, sit down or go on a walk and listen to one book or read one book for a long period of time and get, I mean, I remember being a kid and sometimes just lying down and just being bored. And now I feel like with how social media is and everything is in our face at all times, because we have our phones right here, a lot of us are just never bored. Like we never give ourselves an opportunity to be bored. And I think being able to read or listen to a book for a long period of time is actually gonna be better for you mentally and emotionally rather than always needing more dopamine spikes with different type of content. So please, please make sure you're reading something. Moving on, now I want you to relax. And the cool part about relaxing is you can do that while you read, you can do that while you walk. I really just want you to take some time for yourself. 
If relaxing for you is with your family, cool, do it with your family. If relaxing for you is taking time alone, cool, do it alone. If it's with friends, cool, do it with friends. But I really, really, really want people to start taking time to relax and wind down. I think one of the, the most amazing things about the world we live in is the convenience of, of everything that we have, right? It's like we're especially living in the United States, so much of what we have is convenient. You can order food right to your door. You can, you can do things without having to leave your house or your apartment. Unfortunately, as a result of that, it gives us more time to work. It, when you don't have to go to the grocery store, you can just order them delivered right to your house. When you don't have to do all of these other things, well, now you have more time where you can grab your phone and get to work, whether you're working on social media or you're answering emails or taking phone calls. And that's why I think so much of what we've done is actually, even if we look at the pandemic, one of the things that's interesting is when the pandemic started and so many people started working from home, they would have these meetings blocked off every hour. And I'm sure many of you watching can relate to this. When you're in the office, you have eat, you have so many meetings. You know, you have the walks to and from meetings. Maybe you're go you're gonna go get lunch with a colleague. Maybe you have like all these different conversations with people in between different work meetings. But when you're at home and you're on Zoom, it's like meeting, 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 and there's very little room for breaks or for even just walking around. So I think the working from home and this greater convenience has actually led to more time total spent working and not relaxing. So please make sure you take some time for yourself. Put your phone down. And this is a common theme. Put your phone down. Keep in mind, this is not good for my business telling you to stop watching me on social media, but it's so important for your health. Put your phone down, take some time to relax and have real conversations either with your family, your friends, your colleagues, going on a walk by yourself, doing something to really let you unwind and relax. Now, the next one, get at least six to eight hours of sleep every night. I apologize to all the new parents out there. Trust me, I get it. My daughter is six months old. We will put a picture of her right here. She's adorable. I'm obsessed with her. Uh, I get it. It can be very, very, very difficult, whether you have one kid, two kids, three kids, five kids. It's brutal, and especially if you've got young ones, little ones, it can be really, really challenging. If you are that person where maybe you're living a life right now where sleep just isn't as accessible to you, that's okay. Maybe right now you won't be able to focus on sleep, but you can focus on all this other shit. That's just one aspect of it, right? But most people do have more control over their sleep than they give themselves credit for. They're just sitting up like this with their phone directly in their fucking face for so many hours before night, all that blue light going in their eyes, and then it's just so easy to keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, or whatever it is that you're doing. Make sure, I, I think it's very important, try to get to bed before midnight, if you can do that. If you're, if there's, you know, maybe if you're a nurse or a firefighter or who knows whatever you're doing, some jobs prevent that from happening and I get it. But if you can get to bed before midnight to give yourself at least six to eight hours of high quality sleep, it is absolutely, it is essential for your health. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, follow me on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can do that here. You know I like to have drinks several nights a week, but one thing that I strongly encourage you to do is if you drink a lot, like when I drink, I usually, I'm not drinking until I'm shit faced most of the time. It's usually just like a couple of drinks and, and that's it and it doesn't really affect my sleep quality. But if you're drinking a lot on a regular basis and you're always feeling tired and lethargic, alcohol can dramatically negatively affect your sleep quality. It's, it's really unbelievable. In fact, so I have this Garmin and it can track my sleep quality. And it's not like I put in when I'm drinking, drinking alcohol, but if I have a little bit more than I should, it will tell me the next day. It's like, oh wow, you slept really shitty last night. My heart rate was higher. Like everything gets really screwed up from a significant amount of, of alcohol. So if you're drinking alcohol on a consistent basis and you're not getting good sleep, might be worth trying to reduce or eliminate alcohol so you can get better sleep. Now, the second to last one before we get to the one that I'm really excited to talk about is, this is obvious, everyone's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, we get it. Drink more water, please stay hydrated. Listen, you can get hydrated from other things as well. I don't care if it's tea, I don't care if it's sparkling water, I don't care, but please, drink water. Don't overthink this, right? People always ask, well, exactly how much water? How many ounces do I need a day? Listen, if you're thirsty, drink. If you're hungry, drink. If you exercise and you sweat a lot, drink. If your pee is getting a little bit dark, drink. Stay hydrated. Don't overthink it. I'm not gonna give you an exact precise number of ounces of water to drink every day. Just fucking drink when you're thirsty, when you're hungry, if you sweat, and if your pee starts to go a little bit dark, 
make sure you're drinking water. And especially if you're really focused in the gym, I know we're not talking about exercise here, but if you're focused on your performance, whether it's in the gym or outside, whether you're an endurance athlete or a strength athlete, you just wanna get stronger, a teeny tiny bit of dehydration massively impacts your performance. It's actually fucking incredible. If you look at the research around how much dehydration negatively impacts your performance, you will never be dehydrated again because you will not want to sacrifice the strength and the performance benefits that you'll get from actually staying fully hydrated. So please stay hydrated. Do you know how I hate when people say eating fruit makes you fat? Well, you know what I hate even more than that? is people trying to hack my social media accounts, which is happening all the time. And yes, I've got two-factor authentication, blah, blah, blah. But I had a real scary experience recently where my YouTube channel was almost entirely hacked. So if you're not on my email list, click the link in the description, get on my email list so I can always find you if, God forbid, my YouTube or my Instagram or anything is hacked. All right, get on the email list. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. Now, on to the last one. Um, I don't remember exactly what words I wanted to put in here, but to the, if actually Mitch, can you read it to me? Be active in a community in real life. Thank you. Be active in a community in real life. And really the, the key words here are in real life. It is, I think the most important part of this. Now for me, there are many ways that I do this, whether it's at my synagogue, with people at, at my synagogue that we celebrate Shabbat with and all the Jewish holidays, or jujitsu. I go to jujitsu every day and I have people there that I can interact with, my friends outside. I think now more than ever, it is very easy to be on social media. And I know if I go on social media, usually within 30 seconds, I'll see a post and or a comment that will light me the fuck up and I'll get pissed off and be like, humanity's going down the drain. People are, people are idiots, people are stupid, people are mean, they're bigoted, whatever it is. And like, there's always going to be like anger with social media. Even if I'm in a great community online, there's still a significant disconnect. And I found that ever since the pandemic, it got dramatically worse, which makes sense, right? Like with the pandemic, we were told to, to stay inside, not go out, not to interact with people. And as a result, we all went online more and more and more and more, and we're lacking human connection. When we look at overall health and wellness, we need human connection, we need each other. And one of the best parts about it is when you interact with people in real life, even if it's people that maybe you disagree with on certain things, you realize they're not evil. <laughs> they're not bad people. Maybe they just, God forbid, fucking disagree with you on something. Cause you know, you, you're not always right all the time. I'm not always right all the time. And people are allowed to have different opinions. What's interesting is when people discuss their different opinions online, it's very easy to get angry and get very, very upset at them. But when you're in person talking to them, you can hear their tone, you can have a real discussion with them, and not to mention just the benefits of having an in-person community, someone you can hug, someone you can embrace, someone you can have a real deep, meaningful conversation with. It's so, so important, and it's like, it's, it's food for your soul. It feeds you, it, it helps keep you, keeps your trust in humanity going. And I know this sounds woo woo and a little bit ridiculous, but if we're talking about your overall health, which doesn't just include physical, but mental and emotional, I cannot say this enough. Please get involved in a community in real life. Maybe it's rock climbing, maybe it's dancing, maybe it's jujitsu, maybe it's a church or a synagogue or a mosque. I don't care what it is. Find a community. Maybe you go to a class to do artwork, Maybe you do like a, a pottery class. I don't give a shit. Find a community where you can go and interact with real people. Maybe it's one time a week, two times a week, three times a week. Again, I don't care. Try and do it every week at least once and interact with those people. Go to lunch with those people. Go to dinner with those people. Invite them over your house. Go to their house. I really wanted to harp on this because now more than ever, a community in real life in person is I think the most underrated thing you can be doing for your overall health and well-being. So please find a community in real life, in real life and interact with them. All right. So that's it. Hopefully I did a good job with that one. So we're just rack that off without taking a break. But if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Now what we're going to do is we're going to announce the three people who won a free month in the inner circle. If you don't know this or if you're new to the channel every single video i pick three people who commented on the previous video to win a free month in the inner circle so we're going to announce those winners right now 
And the winners are, we've got Jenny O, we've got Moses Enos, and we've got Cassidy Amiot. You three have won a free month in the Inner Circle. Congratulations, I've actually left you a comment explaining how you can get your free month in the Inner Circle. And again, to everyone watching, if you didn't win this time, you can win next time. Leave a comment on this video, and when I publish the next video, you will hear who won the three free months in the Inner Circle. Now, let's go answer some Instagram questions. All right, first question is from MDAT810. They said, should I worry about my body fat when I'm bulking? Now, there's a bunch that I wanna discuss here. I'll start by saying bulking is another word for saying you're gonna deliberately increase your calories, usually into a calorie surplus, so that you can build muscle. Now, the way that they phrased it is what I really wanna talk about, is they said, should I worry about my body fat? Now, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. When I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I don't do one-on-one -on -one anymore, I just do my inner circle, which if you'd like to join that, you can click, uh, no, you're not gonna click the link because it's on YouTube, but you can go to sfinnercircle.com and join right now. But when I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching, one of the things I would tell my clients, I'd be on the phone with them on our consult call right before we started working together, and I would say, listen, if there's an emergency, just Put in the subject line, emergency, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But the reality is, we're doing strength training and nutrition coaching, there should be no fucking emergencies. Like if there's a real emergency, you call 911, you go to the hospital, there's no reason to email your fitness coach, I have an emergency. Like gaining a little bit of extra body fat, not an emergency. Uh, going out to eat on a Friday night and not being able to track your calories, not an emergency. These things are not emergencies. These are things that you should not be worrying about or super stressed over. These are things with very simple solutions that should not be worrying you. You can worry about cancer. You can worry about a plane crash. You can worry about World War III. You cannot worry about gaining a little bit of extra body fat during your deliberately done bulk in which you are living in a society and in, in, in a time in which you have a surplus of food at your disposal and you are deliberately trying to do that in which you are deliberately going to strength train and build more muscle. This isn't something to worry about. You don't worry about that. We can think about it and we can discuss strategies to improve it and to mitigate excess fat gain, but no, you should not be worrying about it. And to dive more into the question, when you're doing a bulk and you're deliberately increasing your calories and you're in a calorie surplus, adding body fat is normal, which is why it's super important before you do a straight bulk to get very lean, to reduce your body fat as much as you can safely so that when you do go into bulk, you have a little bit more wiggle room so you can add body fat without needing to, to worry about overdoing it. Now, if you're 40% body fat, you should not be going into a bulk. You should not be increasing your calories in order to build muscle. If you're 40% body fat, you could probably eat in a calorie deficit and still build muscle. But if you're already very lean, if you're, I would say, like sub 12% body fat for a guy, sub like 18, 19% body fat for a woman, then you can go into a bulk. And yeah, you'll gain a little bit of extra body fat, but that's fine. You also build muscle. And then after whether it's 16, 20 weeks, whatever it is, how long your bulk is, then you can go back into maintenance, then you go back into a deficit, you lose the fat, you maintain the muscle, and you repeat this cycle over and over and over again until you die. Next question is from SD Lance's. Uh, Does it matter where your calories come from? Yes. It absolutely does matter. There's a lot of people in the flexible dieting crowd or the calories in, calories out crowd who say things like, calories are all that matter. And that is fucking stupid. Calories are not all that matter. Yes, your calories count, absolutely. But calories are not all that count and calories are not all that matter. From a weight loss and specifically a fat loss perspective, your calories are your top priority from a fat loss perspective. Because if you're eating too many calories, then you will not lose fat, period, end of story. But there's a difference between fat loss and health. And if we're talking about optimizing fat loss and optimizing health, or just screw fat loss, purely optimizing health, then of course the quality of your food is 
unbelievably important. You need to be having a majority of whole, minimally processed, nutrient-dense foods. Can you lose fat only eating Twinkies? Yes, you can. There's a guy who actually did it. Can you lose fat eating a Big Mac every day? Yes, I did it. I have a whole YouTube video on it. Click the link in the description if you want to watch it. But it's not healthy to have the majority of your calories come from foods that are highly processed and not uh, and are void of a lot of nutritional value. So yes, it absolutely matters where your calories come from. The majority of your foods should be whole, minimally processed, nutrient-dense foods. And then some of your foods that you can eat some of the times don't have to be super nutritionally valuable, but maybe they're just you eat them because you enjoy them or because they were a big part of your life growing up or because they're a part of your religion or because they're a part of your culture or whatever it is, you just enjoy having it. Like for me, it's a Friday night. I literally just saw on my story or I'm on my wife's story that she wants to eat pizza tonight. I didn't know this. She didn't tell me this. I just saw it right before we started filming this segment. So we're gonna be eating pizza tonight. It is not a high quality food. It's not a food, regardless of what the, the CDC or the US government says, it's not a fruit. Pizza is not good for you, right? It's not like a, a, a very high quality food, but we're gonna eat it tonight and we're gonna enjoy it. And then we're gonna get right back on track tomorrow. So yes, it absolutely matters where your calories come from, but calories, yes, they count and all calories matter, but they're not all that count and they're not all that matters. And that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. If you want to be entered to win a free month in the Inner Circle, again, subscribe to the channel, like it, and leave a relevant comment. I pick three people to win a free month in the Inner Circle every single month. And I also just wanna say I really appreciate you watching the videos, the support of the channel. It means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.